up, Roto Grinders NFL Pick Six Show, sponsored by uh, by Thrive. The uh, Week Eleven, we're in the double digits on the back end. We've made it. Uh, usual suspects. We got Rich Rebar, Sharp Football Analysis, John Dago, Four for Four, Bet Spurts. By the way, we should mention. Right, get it out there in the open. Uh, we're gonna be back next week. Well, back of course. Well, two times, right? We're doing a Thanksgiving slate. That that's in the works, right, John? We're doing it. It's gonna happen. That's our favorite slate. We get Jesper Horstead every single year on that slate. So yes, <laughs> we'll be we'll be discussing the Thanksgiving, and then usually how it works is you kick it to Reeves and I about the Sunday slate, and sometimes we're ready for it, sometimes we aren't. So uh, yeah, it'll be fun. Yeah, we're gonna be, be breaking down lines, tight ends, uh, yep. <laughs> like madmen. 150 lineups of lines, tight ends. That sounds like a lot of fun. How much? How much? Uh, Brock Wright is too much. Brock Wright. <laughs> we'll find out. Uh, James Mitchell, there you go. He's lurking as well too. Uh, is it? Uh, is it Buffalo? Who plays Detroit on next? Yeah, game? Buffalo. Yeah, yeah. Think they're gonna be popular in a three games late? <laughs> <laughs> and they were on it last year too. Uh, so, man, um, yeah. Be- and best of all, last year, remember they played the very last game. Uh, if you went into that Saints game with the Bills onslaught, like that was the winner. Um, tacking on like Matt Breida, I believe, was the was the perfect complimentary piece to Josh Allen in that game. Matt Breida, of course. Like, how would you not have Matt Breida? In that your was a, yeah. The D Jacks had the touchdown. We were on it, man. Uh, <laughs> That's the one year we don't get the thing. Bears. Like the one year we don't get the Bears on Thanksgiving. The Bears are fun. That's the annual show as well, <laughs> where uh, I do like five shows because of my schedule that day, and oh. ours is the last one. And I usually show up with a lot of alcohol in me, but this year, <laughs> oh, yeah, this last year, year you were this year we're time. staying away from. I, I got a little too aggressive last year and uh, had Maker's Mark next to me. We're going to stick to like champagne or beer this year. We're going to keep it a little calmer. <laughs> last year, you and I jumped on the ship chasing uh, show afterwards and uh, you did not, your stream kept going, but you were no longer present. <laughs> I, may, I, I, may, I may have fallen off the chair. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Ronald and chat, by the way, what's up, though? Those that watch us live on YouTube, do appreciate y'all hanging out. So you guys got me my biggest win last year on the X Games. So there you go. Hey, Tom listen, Brady. get that Christmas cash, Ron. Uh, hopefully we run it back for you. That's and, uh, that's my favorite slate. Plus, PS5 is going to be in stock for Black Friday. We're ready. <laughs> that's right. We got we to gotta pay for this stuff. God of yeah. War's out. You got to get that God of War. <laughs> I, I just started playing the first one the other day it's it's, it's kind of fun yeah i just got into it I'm, I'm like seven years behind everything it's all right uh giselle by the way in chat says uh i swear this john guy is everywhere yeah there you go wait wait till thanksgiving he is the thanksgiving slates. i Here do i do i do record with a lot of friends around the industry yeah i like talking football i know sometimes uh it doesn't seem like it because i'm so tired but i do i do love my job <laughs> it is a weird thing where like you you catch yourself complaining like oh i got three shows mm-hmm. oh like you know what like you know how good you have it the yeah. The uh, the common thing behind the scenes in Reeves and I world this time of year is to start your sentence off by saying, I'm very grateful. And then it's usually <laughs> all my clients. <laughs> but I'm absolutely miserable and it's getting dark at 4 p.m. Yeah. yeah I mean, listen, it's, it, it's, still, it's still a job. Yeah. I'm happy. But I'm grateful that I won the movie bet last week. We're going to be talking mm, about that later. Not on you had a uh, nice little Raiders Colt stack. That was nice. Yeah, it was pretty good. I had that lineup and some other stuff too. But I, you know, we're gonna be talking about that later on the show. If you guys are uh, not aware, but myself, uh, John, and Rich, produce, uh, producer Steve, we uh, we had a four man. The winner is gonna force the other three to uh, watch a movie of their choice. I have a whole bunch. Uh, uh, well, we'll talk about it later on the show. And I'm not sure how nice I want to be. And producer let's say Steve that- played Tony like a like a sharp. You know, he's behind yeah. the scenes. You guys can't see Steve, but he's a sharp. You had Tony. Uh, it was a high. It was we put up a lot of points in that tournament. Yeah, I I have been Fandle like uh, you, you shared a uh, you crushed somewhere else. Not, not you, you put it in the wrong uh, you put it in our contest. You put it in one where you actually win American dollars. <laughs> yeah, 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 <laughs> uh, yeah. It's a good week. Like I, I'm talking before this is where the last couple of years has been my hottest stretch. Like when we hit November, I don't know if it's because uh, the information we've accrued makes us more accurate, or just like more people are like coming in like that like, from season long. I don't know if it's a combination of all the above, but hopefully we stay strong. And we'll talk about that contest in the movies at the end for everyone, not only to not be self-serving up front and think this show is only about that contest in the movie, but we don't have to end on tight ends, one. And two, let's save the fun for the end, and that way if people want to be a part of that, they can hear the movie, take the week like us to watch it, and come back and we talk about it at the end of next week's show. 
Yeah, and I just got a great suggestion from Rodel in chat. Uh, phenomenal. Here, this is what I'm going to do. I want to give away a week free of Rotor Grinders Premium. Uh, not in chat, but if you guys are watching us on YouTube on the replay, most people watch us on the replay. In, in the comment section, give us movie suggestions we should like uh, give going forward. So just tell us that. And uh, if I if I pick yours, I'm going to pick somebody uh, at random. The, you know, the most interesting, the most clever, the funniest, whatever, whatever. Uh, I'm going to pick somebody. Get, get yourself a one week uh, free of Rotor Grinders Premium. Uh, leave if you can leave your Twitter handle, that would be helpful. Some way I can contact you if you actually win. All right, uh, John, anything else as far as that? How did you do? Because myself and Rich, I don't want to get into me because I had a 200 on DK with Kenny Galladay. Oh, the worst! Like, you know, you're supposed to be happy, it was a good lineup, but good lord. If you would have played Nico Collins, how much money would you have won? Well, not it, I could have played MBS, I could have played the, the dude for the Packers who I did play, he was in my pool. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know what Collins did. I don't remember what he he, he scored a touchdown, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it would have Fand- been, I would have won some tournaments, I think. Yeah, it, it, I didn't Fandle- want to go too into it. <laughs> on Fandle, I got the money back. Uh, I'm not having luck this year in, or I'm not building correctly this year in DraftKings, just because like I understand the game, like I know what I'm doing in in leveraging off of the chalk. The chalk is a chalk for a reason. They're just great plays, and so here I am like a donkey trying to like get leverage off of these touchdowns Way of, for of, failure. away from like 6,500 <laughs> Justin Fields. I understand what's happening. It's no big deal. I, I suck it up and I know what I'm doing. Yeah. I was under the, the field on fields, but you know, it still. hasn't been a good year for GPP bro for sure. No. no. And no. I am GPP bro. It's not been a good year for me, but I, we're still alive. There's half the season left. I'm not worried at all. It just takes one week, man. If you're a GPP bro, that's just yeah. takes one week, one lineup. It's all it takes. Just gonna yeah, and I'm more of a, I'm more like Joey Kanish. Uh, you know, I, <laughs> I, I'm targeting like small field stuff. I mean, I'm trying to play like in the, like the 222s and stuff. I'm trying to play like sub 500 entry, entry stuff. Like, you know, uh, where if I have, if I run out and hit, like I, I'm hitting over the, over everybody. I'm not, I'm not trying to beat 20,000 people in a tournament. To be, to be fair, yeah. I'm also in those uh, 222, 500 um, mm-hmm. with you on FanDuel single entries, but I also haven't had luck in those yet. So we'll get there. I'm not worried. I'll tell you what's been hot this year, if you guys haven't checked these out, is the the quintuple ups, man. Those have been banging. Like most people just throw cash game optimals into there. Mm-hmm. And like those have those have been real kind of a, a spot where you can really kind of take a lot of leverage. I mean, you, you're, you, you can get the 25 and 50s and you're popping those because you're just playing as cash lineups. Just be a little bit different, right? Or you can yep. do like a 4v4 oh, that projects is. like one or two points less and nobody's on your guys and you're getting, you know, you are you might get crushed, but if you finish last, who cares? Yeah. No, it doesn't matter. You just got to win 25% of those or whatever it is. Um, if you guys, first time here, if you're not aware, talk to Main Slate. I can't imagine if you're first time here, but it is. Welcome. Uh, apologies for rambling for the first 10 minutes of the show. It's just kind of how it goes sometimes. We do. Uh, we do not discuss uh, Sunday, Sunday night games or Monday night games. The buys this week is uh, all Florida. Florida's off and Seattle. Uh, an 11-gamer, as far as the main slate, we focus on three main games. You break it down from all the angles possible. Then we run it back and talk about our fair plays, position by position, as far as players that are not in those three main games. John, man, this is, I mean, this is the week. Well, I, I was talking to Rich before you jumped on. And so, like, the last couple weeks, to be fair, I on Wednesday night, I was like, oh, man, I hate this slate. And once the day rolls around, it's like, you know what? Not bad. I, I can work with this. <laughs> I don't know if I can work with this. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Chicken salad. I, I don't know what, what I can do with this slate. Make me feel better about it. Do you like this slate or do you hate it as well? I do. We do have some powerhouses, but we also have some concerns around the board for game script reasons, for weather reasons, which we'll talk about. I think we have one clear-cut quarterback that maybe we pay down for. Uh, Justin Fields got a little bit of a bump, at least. Like, respect to FanDuel for putting him around Tua and Patrick Mahomes last week. Patrick Mahomes, who, of course, took down most tournaments on FanDuel, at least. Fields was still too cheap on DraftKings, but a little bit of a bump, 7,600. You could argue that may be too cheap, but we'll talk about that game. So, yeah, I think there are a lot of different directions you can go for this slate. I think there's value at both running back and wide receiver, which there wasn't last week. And so I always prefer when we're in that kind of range for players. All right. And the salary is just getting out of hand, too. And like, I, we'll talk about it later on in the show, but you're not going to believe the players that are popping up in the optimals. I don't know if you've run well, up. Also, don't, I mean, you got to think, too, the context of this slate. Uh, obviously, this slate in particular, the guys that are off this week, you name the, the guys on by, it's a, just a massive blow to the wide receiver position. Obviously, we lose both Dolphins because it's all combos. 
you know, you lose Lockett and DK on Seattle, you lose both Tyreek and Waddle, we lose both Evans and Godwin, and you lose Christian Kirk, who's been a top 10 receiver. Cooper Cup got hurt last week. Yeah. So, like, the the top of – these are those are, like, all guys that are, like, consistently ranked in the top 15 every week at wide receiver, mm-hmm. and they're gone. Just poof, out of here. So, uh, yeah, so this wide receiver – I mean, if you go to, like, industry rankings – I set my rankings today for the website – uh and man it is gross the names like because there's t- you know i'm writing these players up based on expectations and you're like yeah this guy you know he's a wide receiver three in your lineup you're setting like linear in a, like a linear list and you're like holy shit this dude's wide receiver 17 right now like <laughs> oh my god like you know like just go look at any of the industry rankings and look at the names at the wide receiver position so like this slate's going to be particularly fun what you do there do you just try to pay up for one of these hammers or are we just going to be throwing stuff at the wall? Because we know that the wide receiver position is inherently volatile anyways. Uh, some of these guys that are going to be popular, like we'll talk about some of the guys like, you know, the Paris Campbells and, you know, we'll see what ends up happening with like the Denver's and the Rams situations when we get there. But like, man, it is, there are going to be some guys in some lineups this week that typically are like, you might be like, I might flex this guy in a season long week. But like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's where we are at wide receiver this week. All right, without further ado, and this kind of speaks to the slate, although it's a, you know, it's a pretty big boy total, uh, Chicago. Chicago at Atlanta, the total is 50 and a half. Atlanta's a three-point favorite here, John. Uh, it's in a dome, so no elements. We love that this time of year on the turf as well. Uh, big boy number, two running quarterbacks, one that's just running out of his mind, uh, you know, what's going on there in Chicago fields. It's great to see the elevation, though. I'm happy to see him taking this big step forward. Unfortunately, he's really, really expensive now. Um, where do you want to start here, John, as far as Chicago and Atlanta? And I don't know what to do with Atlanta's backfield. Uh, I'll start with Chicago. Atlanta's has some interesting pieces too, but it's no secret what the bears want to do. They're the first team in NFL history with at least 225 rushing yards in five consecutive games. (laughs) Uh, Justin Fields in that time has set the NFL record for the most rushing yards for a quarterback in any five game span. But this is also a matchup where he can unlock his passing ceiling. Atlanta secondary has benefited now in back-to-back games from playing that injured chargers offense that I stacked like a donkey And just 16 pass attempts against the Panthers last Thursday, who simply rode Deontay Foreman for 31 carries and 130 yards. But it's not like they've suddenly become good. Like, go back beyond those two weeks. Just let's let's stretch it to four games back. Week five, Tom Brady just looked 350 yards and a touchdown when that Bucs offense was struggling. Jimmy Garoppolo had 290 and two touchdowns. Joe Burrow, remember, 480 and three scores. And P.J. Walker in week eight, the first time they played the Falcons, 317 and a touchdown for 8.8 yards per attempt. Uh, And this Falcons secondary may be getting A.J. Terrell back, but still banged up another spot. So honestly, it's another week where we're just really talking about ownership and what we can do if we pay for Justin Fields, it's not like Justin Fields is a bad play yet again. How much do you think is a priority this week? I like other options. I'm also the person who went underweight on him when he was 6,500. So maybe Rich is the person to ask about that. Yeah, Rich, it's like a kind of this Martingale thing where if you keep fading him, eventually it's not going to work. But like that, you might be broken on the streets in a couple more weeks if you keep doing that. Um, yeah, of course, now you got to pay him. He's 7.6K now in DK. Hurts, Lamar, Allen, a little bit more expensive than him. Um, they have wheels as well. They can throw as well. Uh, in the dome there in Atlanta, are you prioritizing fields? He doesn't really have a ready-made pairing that's super obvious. Cole Komet, um, is he healthy? By the way, he took a big hit last week. Is he fine going forward? I guess he's fine. I didn't see what if he, if he practiced today or not. He was okay. a DMP, but um, Adam Hogue, who's – a pretty locked in bears reporter here in Chicago said there's no concern that he will play. So uh seems like he's good to go. Okay. Yeah. Rich, how much are you prioritizing fields this week? Well, on this particular slate, I mean, he does stand out, you know, there's, we don't have Mahomes. He's on Sunday night. We don't know what we're going to get in the Buffalo game. Like that would be kind of, you know, <laughs> touch and go until we get till Sunday and have like a little bit more clarity uh, because obviously the, the Browns defense can't stop anything. So if you know the, the weather's fine, we're gonna we're gonna be hammering some Josh Allen. We do have Jalen Hurts in a dome too. We got Lamar as a huge favorite too, but we don't know what pass catchers Lamar is gonna have. So I mean Fields does stand out at the top though, having like a really optimal matchup. The and it's not just the past two weeks. The last two weeks have showcased like where the ceiling can go, right? Like he was getting you like that could complete like he was the Konami code quarterback. 
for several weeks up before that. This he's had six now top twelve scoring weeks, but the past two weeks where he's led all quarterbacks in fantasy scoring are when you're getting like the hundred and seventy five rushing yards, right? I mean, he has he has seventy seven rushing points over the past four games. Like that's absolutely insane uh, where the ceiling is going. So if you fall back to like maybe being like that 20 point player, cause like the 40 point player, you can't compete with, like you just have, you have to play him if he's going to keep reeling off games like that. Now, can he keep doing this at this level? I mean, he's the first quarterback to, to have the same amount of rushing yards, the back to back weeks go for 150. He's scoring long touchdowns, like yeah. out running DBs. Uh, yeah, absolutely insane. But he does stand out on the slate. Atlanta also can aid, all the passing metrics, right? Cause we know we're going to get the rushing, but like Daigle said, I mean, they're, they're 31st in pressure rate. They're 31st in completion rate allowed. They're 27th in yards allowed per pass attempt. They're 28th in passing points allowed per game. And all those things do when you pair them with his rushing floor is just keep pumping up the ceiling. So, I mean, yeah, he, the price went up. He was like in the last two weeks, he was egregiously priced on DraftKings. So like you had to play him. FanDuel's been ahead. Like last week they made him, like he was the same price in Mahomes. So you had a choice to make, you know, this week, if there's no Josh Allen, there's no Mahomes and you're just fighting between fields and Lamar Jackson at the top. I mean, it's, it's a really good spot again for fields where he objectively stands out to be better than those guys. Do you want to play him naked or you want to play him with commit? The the Claypool thing is, I don't know what's going on there. They traded for him and they're not really using him. What's the point? Um, Mooney, I guess, maybe, but like, well, what's, what's the best route here as far as fields? Yeah. So all these guys still are hyper, hyper volatile. Like even come at, like we still have a team that's like, there's, there's 25 and fewer targets available per game on this team still. Hmm. So there's going to be a lot of volatility here still week to week. It's going to be all, did you, did you run into those touchdowns? Cause look at Komet's lines, right? Like Komet's lines are nothing to, to write home about when you're looking at the catches and yards. But the, you know what column is getting there is the touchdowns. And it's funny, you know, we have this year where, you know, we entered with, you know, Miles Sanders couldn't score touchdowns. And he's got like, he's got a career high. He's, or he's matched it. Jacoby Myers couldn't score touchdowns. He's got a career high. And now Komet has like finally popped the seal. And now he can't stop scoring touchdowns. Uh, but he's had three amazing tight end matchups in a row. And he gets another one here. I mean, Atlanta's allowing uh, 5.9 catches per game of tight ends. It's 30th in the NFL. So, like, it's another good spot. So, he just runs in another good matchup. Fields has a great passing matchup. So, inherently, you want to attack that. We'll, well, he's got – Mooney's in a great matchup, too. We'll see if A.J. Terrell comes back or not. But Mooney plays in the slot, like, for 50% of his snaps, and especially since Claypool's been there. Well, Claypool hasn't played a lot. He's gone back to playing strictly outside, though. Um, so, Mooney gets a good matchup, too. So, I mean, I'll, I'm fine playing him naked, but I'm not going to go out of my way to stack these guys, though. I thought I was being clever last week, like being well over the field on Montgomery. I had some Herbert as well, you know, uh, as that was the, the leverage move against against all the fields out there. And then Herbert got hurt. Montgomery was worthless. But now uh, Herbert's hurt, John. Montgomery. Uh, how do we feel about Montgomery? How much of that backfield is going to be his? Who's behind him? A guy named Ebner and a guy named Evans? Tristan Ebner. And we've seen somewhat – this situation before because the one game that or David Montgomery missed earlier this year, Khalil Herbert stepped in for 71% of the team's backfield touches <laughs> out touched Tristan Hebner 20 to eight. So we assume that's Montgomery's floor since they were in, in some cases giving him more touches than Khalil Herbert. Anyhow, even in the last month when it was supposed to be riding the hot hand. So we think this 20 touches and 71% of backfield touches is his floor. And so it's a good spot. I I'm just worried that, and we've done this so many times in the past year, even last Thanksgiving, speaking of, I just always get worried when it's David Montgomery chalk week, even in a good spot. So that's my only concern here. Uh, maybe Tristan ever gets those eight touches and takes us away from him. And, more importantly, like last week, if you went that way, I know it didn't turn out well, <laughs> but David Montgomery, you can still use at least as a leverage option off of a now more expensive Justin Fields. Yeah, Rich, if you have a thought, by all means, go for it. Otherwise, uh, feel free to jump over to Atlanta. No, yeah, David Montgomery, especially on FanDuel, he's he's pretty cheap uh, in the context of the slate, so you can get him in. Like I said, the touches are just going to be there on a team that we know it's going to run the football. I mean, there's an outcome in this game where it, it is like 20 to 17 because both these teams just if both these teams run the football because the Bears' defense is absolutely awful. 
Like that's the other, you know, the other side of this is that as the Bears offense has been scoring all these points, they have to score all these points because they're like what they're putting on the field defensively, like they can't stop anybody. Uh, you know, it's it's just absolutely wild. The opponents uh, have scored a touchdown now on 34% of their drives on the road. It's the second highest uh, rate in the NFL. Uh, so, yeah, Atlanta should be have no trouble running the football over the Bears, too. Uh, so it could be just a run game, right? Because uh, 61% of the Bears' offensive yards comes from rushing. It's the highest rate in the NFL, and Atlanta's third. So this could be a game where, like, there. what if there's just, like, 35 combined passes in this game or something stupid? Uh, there's probably one of those in the range of outcomes too, but the Falcons are really easy because we don't know what running back to play because they're all going to play. Yeah. Like this, that's where we are. They, they're not going to go out and extend Coral Patterson. I doubt for like a huge allotment of snaps because even when Tyler Algier and Caleb Huntley were playing, they were splitting reps. They've also found that both those guys are effective so they can ro- the, rotate those guys in. So you're just really hoping to play kind of a touchdown whack-a-mole game, which would favor CPAT, but none of these guys catch passes. They throw to their running backs the lowest rate in the NFL, so you're not getting any run out there. Um, and then we could play Kyle Pitts if we want, right? Like, at least we've evolved. Like, we've, we've, we've made, like, the Pokemon evolution, right? Like, uh, we are no longer Pikachu where it's like, will Kyle Pitts get targets? Like, we've gone to Raichu status of, like, can they complete targets to Kyle Pitts now? Uh, and that's kind of where we are. The last two weeks, 202 air yards, 126 air yards, 55 receiving yards. Um, and he's wide open on these balls. Like, you look, he's yeah. behind Kyle Pitts is all alone. He's behind the defense, and they just can't complete these passes to him. Um, you look at him on the season, just 50.9% of his targets this season have been deemed catchable. That's the lowest rate among all tight ends with 25 or more targets on the year. The next closest tight end is at 62%. So, I mean, the gift and curse of Kyle Pitts, man, uh, he, he's wide open downfield, but low leverage targets are, are what he's getting in terms of success rate. He's uh, he's also played and increased 53% of his routes from the slot the past two weeks and CPAT returns. Um, and the slot is where the Bears are allowing a league high 10.8 yards per attempt. So the matchup makes sense. But again, it's very cross your fingers, as it always is with Kyle Pitts. Except on this tight end slate, maybe I do cross yeah, my fingers. Nope, no, Kelsey. Uh, we don't know what's going on with Andrews yet. Also, um, if we're playing the t- touchdown whack-a-mole game, like, dude, this Falcons... This Falcons team total is the second highest on the main slate. And, mm-hmm. and I'm not saying like it's going to come to fruition, but like the Ravens Panthers game, Ravens with the highest team total, the total's only sinking. And so like the Falcons might actually close by Sunday as the highest team total of this entire slate. CPAT's wow. only 6,700 on FanDuel. And we know how volatile it is given that, you know, two weeks ago, first game off injured reserve, led the team with 11 carries and 14 touches. Then the next week, short turnaround, gets only those six touches. Like, I, I will suck it up for 6,700 on FanDuel and play the whack-a-mole game. By the way, it's your point, Rich, as far as, uh, you know, the pace and how slow this game may go and like a bunch of runs killing the clock. I always look at the Derek Cardi's, the blitz, the blitz game level factors. So the highest game as far as projected uh, game plays, just to kind of get a scale, 140 plays projected for Dallas, Minnesota. This is the lowest game as far as projected plays, 123.2. Yeah, I mean, it certainly could be a stinker. Uh, just a bunch of like seven yard and six yard, four yard rushes. Yeah, as good as the Bears have been, like that structure of football for generating the amount of points they have, they scored 29 or more points in four, four straight games. And they've done it against two good defenses, two bad defenses. But like, you've just got to be hyper efficient, right? And like running the football, like at that level of efficiency is something we don't see often. Like Dagle just highlighted. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, there definitely is still some fragility here on this side, but you know, here we are, man, chasing it. Does anybody want to endorse Mariota as a cheap quarterback option? You could guarantee me he wouldn't get benched in this game. I might play him, but I can't, <laughs> I can't do it. I think you can stream him. You can stream him in season long leagues, but like, what's the like real run out here that you're hoping to like gain from fantasy, right? Like, does he have a thirty point game in him? Because if you're playing fantasy football on DFS streets this year and the year of 2022, if you're not playing quarterbacks that can push thirty points, like, what are you even doing? I mean, the only counter that is, you know, this isn't the best quarterback week necessarily, especially if you assume, you know, Buffalo gets squirrely as far as the weather and. For what it's worth, Vegas, you know, uh, Mm -hmm. 41 and a half for a Buffalo game against a Cleveland defense, a 24 and a half total. 
they're anticipating some sort of goofiness there, right? We'll see. Like, you well, it got hammered once the weather came. Like everyone just bet it. What did it open at? Do you remember? Uh, I want to say forty-eight. Not sure. Yeah, I can that's, find it real fast. A big uh, move. Is LaShawn yeah. McCoy playing this week in Buffalo? Was, He's great we need that. him. We need the snow tires uh, of Shady. It was 46 and a half was the open. I can't be the first one to, to mention LaShawn McCoy, can I? Oh, was, yeah, the snow tires. Oh, just amazing. He was an incredible snow. As snow, non-snow splits were spectacular. <laughs> uh, John, you got anything else as far as Atlanta's offense you want to get excited about? You want to throw out there as far as some stats, or shall we move on? Lots of cross your fingers, but trust me, that does not mean I'm not playing them. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think that's kind of like the nature of the slate. It's a good way to sum it up. At least that's how I feel right now on a Wednesday night. Game two, these teams are amazing. Detroit and the mm -hmm. Giants, 46 and a half is the total. Detroit, three points dog here. Detroit out of the dome here, Rich. Uh, I'm sure you've seen the dome, uh, non-dome splits for them. They've been horrendous on the road. Giants, three points. Unless you, unless you play the Bears. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> good point. Yeah, there you go. There's an exception to every rule. Um <laughs> What about against the Giants? How, and also, is DeAndre Swift going to be allowed to play football at least to a, a greater degree this week, or just no? Yeah, that's it. He plays his, I don't know, 15, 20 plays, and that he's going to stand in the corner. He's healthy. He's not healthy. Do we know? Does it matter? It's very puzzling to try to figure out. Is he's healthy enough to dress and to come out and get some touches, but not really play at all? I mean, 19 snaps last week, 10 the week before. He hasn't had more than 10 touches in a game since week one. Uh, but still finding a way to get in, have efficient touches, right? <laughs> like he had a touchdown. He got tackled at the one yard line on another carry. Uh, so like still finding his way to efficient touches. Like he, like it doesn't it feel like it's just looming though. Like one of these weeks he's gonna have like eighteen touches and everyone's gonna be like, damn it. Like you know, like but I feel like a lot of people are gonna be chasing that too. Like he's just gonna be the popular GPP bro play, right? Like because what if we run into those touches? Um, yeah, and you know it's it's real tough to try to grasp onto. This is a, a great matchup though for the Lions run game if you wanna get in on it. I mean, the Giants are allowing the most yards per contact prior to contact for running back carry in the NFL. So you got a little bit of run out there. Uh, looks like DJ Shark is going to come back this week. He is practicing today. So at least we won't have the Tom Kennedy experience that's been going on <laughs> the past couple weeks. Uh, maybe that thwarts everyone that's still playing Cleef Raymond. He was popping an optimals for like a couple weeks there because he's just been on the field getting exercise. Uh, but great spot for the Sun God again. And we saw last week, I mean, he had a great matchup again last week. Uh, delivered. Uh, he didn't get the touchdown, but he had another 11 targets. Uh, this is what we get with him. Uh, and then this is a great spot for him because we know the Giants blitz at the highest rate in the NFL, right? They blitz on 45% of passing plays. Uh, Wink has not met a down uh, on when the other opponent's throwing the football or he's not sending an extra guy. Well, Amon Ross St. Brown has – been targeted on 40.3% of his routes against the blitz. He has a 44% team target share against the blitz. Wow. Uh, like, yeah, 44%. Like it's basically like one of every two blitzes, like they're just throwing, he's, he's hitting a hot, like I'm on the hot it's going out here. And then when you look at like the giants this year, if you look at the game logs, like of who, what receivers have had the biggest games against them this year, it's all these pseudo slot guys. Cause I'm on is like a 50, 50 slot guy. Uh, you know, Christian Kirk, uh, C.D. Lamb, Randall Cobb. It's like all these guys have had the best games against the Giants. So, yeah, uh, the Sun God, again, looks pretty good. We see him back in the box again. The the past two games as well, he's accounted for 38% of Jared Goff's targets since T.J. Hawkinson was traded. And more importantly, we're not going to play Jared Goff, you know, on the road in this slate anyways. But, like, Jared Goff has thrown three touchdowns since T.J. Hawkinson has been traded and all three have gone to a different tight end. So, like, you can't yeah. even stack anyone with him <laughs> except Amon Ross St. Brown. So so it actually, like, concerts all of Detroit's targets pretty easily. John, do we like anybody else in Detroit? We, I mean, sure, you can play the running game like Rich was talking about. You can get some Swift, some Jamal. There, there's some, uh, uh, you know, it's it's a little goofy what's going on there, inconclusive, uh, you know, as far as what's happening there in their backfield. But other receivers, okay, we're getting – um. I'm sorry, who'd you say was coming back this week, Rich? Uh, shark practice. They, shark, yeah. Yeah, shark oh, okay. practice, then they uh, activate, activate or opened his window, but they haven't, like, officially pulled him off, I think. I don't, but like, it looks like he's going to play, though. Regardless. It's probably, like, 6K on DK, the way their pricing is. 
He's four two. <laughs> I'm so bitter about it. <laughs> He's four two. I mean, you can't be. We can't. We can't dunk on DraftKings for the entire year of how lazy they've been at pricing and be mad when they finally price everybody up. <laughs> well, there's a happy median, you know. That's well, true. Well, Goldilocks is like you went too far, you know. All right, uh, John. Is there anybody else you like in Detroit that's worth talking about? Honestly, no. I'm waiting to see how their backfield shakes out. Like Rich said, it's it's a good spot to maybe get ahead of DeAndre Swift. Uh, we never take Wednesdays into account too heavily, but Jamal Williams, a little DMP on Wednesday today with an illness. We'll see how that shakes out. Maybe that gives us a cause. Like we were playing Tony Pollard last week anyhow to uh, be ahead of DeAndre Swift in this game, even if Jamal Williams is active. So something I'll be watching because I do want to be ahead of the DeAndre Swift boom. Um, on the other side of the ball, though, if you know what could go wrong if we're trying to save 2K with Daniel Jones instead of Justin Fields, but at the, at the same time, the Lions have allowed a top five finish to opposing quarterbacks in five of nine games this year, and an overall QB one finish on the week to Tua and Fields in two of their last three games. Most people want to logically play Saquon Barkley as a response to Detroit's front seven, permitting the fourth highest explosive run percentage this year and five yards per carry allowed to opposing running backs. But maybe the rushing yards just get soaked up by Daniel Jones because he is averaging 7.6 carries and 6.3 rushing points per game on the season. So I, I do think Daniel Jones is a pretty sneaky player that has a large ceiling here if we want to jam in instead. I think it was you that uh, mentioned Slayton last week. Is that you, John? Um, yes. And Kenny Galladay made it much easier after he recorded his second drop in the first half because literally following the intermission, Darius Slayton came on the field in two wide sets, scored a 54-yard touchdown the next play. And this is the spot for him. Unfortunately, it's such an ugly wide receiver slate, even though I do have a lot of ugly plays I want, and we'll talk about those later, that – Darius Slayton will probably get steamed a little bit, even on 5K on DraftKings. It's pretty cheap. Yeah, we're going to have a Darius Slayton chalk week, I think. Yeah, I think so too, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Slayton has led this team in yards per route run since he initially got worked into the rotation in week four. He's been a top 36 wide receiver in four of his last five games. He's been a top 20 player in two of his last three, and he has a 20.9% target share in his last three starts. So Slayton is admittedly an awesome play with Daniel Jones. Yeah, Isaiah Hodgkins is a person, allegedly. He's the guy that replaced Kenny Galladay. Yeah. He's still a minimum 3K, but he's an exerciser, I assume. Right, Rich? I mean, listen, uh, I tweeted when Lawrence Cager got that touchdown on Sunday. Every week, someone from the Giants catches a pass that I had no idea was still in the NFL. <laughs> like, you know, week one, it was Richie James. Then it was Marcus Johnson in, like, week three. Uh, Lawrence Cage. So if Isaiah Hodgins is going to catch a touchdown, like, sure. Like, if, in the context of the Giants season, I, I believe it, you know. Uh, the one thing you say, like, if Slayton does become chalk as good as – he's not, he's had more than seven targets in any game. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, and it, he's had more than six targets just once. So that's what you're paying for. Like, if you get a run out where he's not efficient, like, we're, it's not like we're buying targets, right? Like, because you can play Paris Campbell at 4,300 and, and know, like, you might get double-digit targets, right? With Slayton, like you're paying, and you know you're getting these six to eight targets. Not even eight, he's even gotten eight. Like, what are you gonna do with him? Like, so there is a lot of fragility there still, too. Is a great matchup and a good spot, and he's been getting there, but you are paying a premium for not a lot of targets. How much of a priority is Barkley? All I mean, dude, dude, 35 carries last week. That's a lot. I mean, look at I mean, he's he's had two games where he's over 30 carries. The Giants are like in an actual hell fight for the postseason and Brian Dayball's first year. Like they are using this dude up. Like uh, he's got 227 he touches. He had 228 touches the past two years. Like, I mean, he, he's just going to keep getting the football. He's their entire offense there. Cause they only, they have to keep using him because if you watch the giants, every single completed pass is on a Daniel Jones bootleg and you can't, you can't do anything unless you're have, they're doing the run game. So, uh, yeah, I mean, just keep jamming him in. He's going to get the football just so many times against the bad defense. You got a home favorite. My... <laughs> no, go, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was going to say, uh, my, only, my only concern, and maybe it's completely unwarranted, is that uh, the only other time he had 30 touches this year, the following week against the Packers, that's when he handled just 67% of the team's backfield touches, and he had a season low in snaps. Um, that's he the only time the he had Okay, thank you. Okay. Yeah. Just Remember, one, he left just wanted game. to check around, yeah. He left the game in uh, the, the London game. 
London. Yes. Okay. That's when he had the shoulder stinger and left and then came back and scored a touchdown. He shook some dude. He took some dude's soul on like a, a pass. I forget. It might have been Darnell Savage. I can't remember. Did you watch that one live Sunday morning or did you watch like the condensed game? I have a uh, Sunday chat with uh, subscribers and we watched it together as a family. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I answered Star State questions for two hours. No. <laughs> I, no. I don't feel bad for you anymore. You could have it. <laughs> Giants seven and two, man, good for them. That's, and this uh, is like another winnable game for them, right? Like, yeah, yeah, they should win it. I think. Why wouldn't they? Um, wow, who are these tight ends? Lawrence Cager. <laughs> I've heard. <laughs> he was a wide him? receiver. He was a wide receiver. <laughs> and remember Tanner Hudson, who ended the show one week because it's twenty twenty two. Ran a route on 80% of dropbacks two weeks ago. They returned from their bye. They just split him and Lawrence Cager in routes. Just let them mirror one another. Okay. I've heard of Hudson. I, I don't think I've heard of Cager. If I have, I just... Yeah, I he's a former he former Jets receiver turned tight end. We got anything else this game? We're moving on. Moving on. Yeah, Dallas, I think so. Minnesota. Uh, Dallas, one and a half point favorite. Is that... Wait, did I write that down correctly? Is Dallas favorite in Minnesota? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What? They it are. was... I mean... I don't know. Uh, maybe Rich has a different spin on this, but the perfect recipe of what had to happen to to sink this number for the Cowboys being favored like happened. Like the the Vikings pulled out a close game against what well, is considered the best team in the AFC, and the Cowboys the Cowboys were 195 and 0 in franchise history with a 14 point lead in the fourth quarter. They are now 195 and 1 <laughs> because of the three and six Packers. Like the flukes that had to happen for both of these teams to like reach the point where the Cowboys weren't three point favorites happened. And thus the Cowboys are now point and a half favorites. Yeah. I just thought it would be like maybe an even game or Minnesota by one. I don't, maybe I'm wrong. Okay. I'm not a quote unquote Vegas guy or whatever. Um, but uh, I thought that was an interesting, uh, interesting number. Dallas on the road here in Minnesota, Minnesota kind of a tough place to play in eight and one, the Vikings. I know people call them kind of a fraudulent one. We'll see. Uh, Zeke limited practicing. You know, we saw Pollard, in, insane usage last game. He got there again. Um, I mean, does it, what do we have to say here, John? It goes without saying. If, if it's if it's Pollard season, if, if Zeke's out, we're on Pollard again. Yes. They, uh, I mean, they didn't move his salary on DraftKings, so uh, what, are, what are you going to do? And last week, his longest run was 14 yards. That wasn't like the week before where he exploded for uh, a 20-plus yard touchdown to 50-plus yard run. Like, he grinded his way off on 72 snaps as a bell cow to over 100 yards. That's That's a big boy stat line. Yeah. Um, I mean, anything to add there, Rich? Like, we like Pollard if, Ze- if Zeke's out and that's that? Yeah. I mean, listen, he's played three <laughs> three career games without Ezekiel, and he's got over 20 PPR points in all of them. Um, I, do, <laughs> I, I do think um, uh, Vikings offense is interesting here because the Cowboys are still the only defense creating pressure on 40% of dropbacks. And that's been Cousins' weakness when it gets there. He's ranked 34th in completion rate for six and a half yards per attempt under pressure. But the last two offenses now around their bye to face the Cowboys have shown the blueprint to the rest of the league. Justin Fields, Dave Montgomery, and Khalil Herbert combined for 212 rushing yards. Only six of that was 60 of that was Justin Fields, too. And Aaron Jones and AJ Dillon combined for 200 yards and 5.4 yards per carry. Uh, the Packers ran for 144 yards on second down alone in that game, basically conceding on second and long, and it didn't matter at all because Dallas couldn't stop it. Because running the ball also entails you tuck Micah Parsons away on, in the front seven as opposed to allowing him being like a linebacker on the outside and covering your quarterback and creating pressure. The Vikings are top six in dropbacks per game and only calling 20 back 20 running back carries per week. But this is the week, honestly, to get Dalvin Cook going and, and DFS pivot from Justin Jefferson to Dalvin Cook because the matchup is so great. You agree with that, Rich? If you're, if you're going to get one of these studs here in Minnesota, you start with Cook or you start with Jefferson? Yeah, Dalvin Cook's a, I played a lot of him last week, and the Dalvin Cook experience is a tough ride, I will say. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. He keeps getting there. But, I mean, he you look at his all of his metrics in terms of, like, success rate. He's one, he's just been a complete boomer bust runner. So you are going to have – you might have to live through two and a half quarters where Dalvin Cook literally has, like, 17 rushing yards and just hope he pops, like, a 50-yarder. But that's been, like, his MO so far. So if you can live through it, just don't watch the games. 
uh, hope, hopefully you just go to the box score and you see, hey, oh, yeah, you got one cook. He had 160 yards. Cool. Also, That's if you're right. watching the game, um, <laughs> you never know if it's Cook or Madison. They both have, like, single digits. Are they two and four, yeah. Yeah. Like, I, I don't know. Which, you, you can't – you just don't – you know, it's not very distinctly clear. Um, I, I think I think we got a little bit of a, a higher floor than what's perceived too, though. And again, um, Justin Jeff, or I say Dalvin Cook the better tournament play since Justin Jefferson is always an awesome play. Uh, I, I know Rich has more on that as well. But remember, Dalvin Cook also suffered that shoulder injury in Week Three, and so like in games around that injury, right? In Weeks One and Two, and three games post by. He hasn't seen fewer than five targets in those five games. Mm-hmm. Whereas the four games he was injured, he totaled five targets in all. Also, this past week was the first time since week one he ran a route on over 70% of dropbacks. So I, I do think Dalvin Cook has this floor, but also a boom ceiling if they play their cards right and like call a game plan that can let them dominate Dallas. Rich, was that the best catch we've seen in our lifetime? The, the Justin Jefferson, you consider the, uh, the situation as well. I suppose the Giants won too, David Tyree in the conversation, but the fourth and 18 last week. I thought Cortland Sutton had the best catch of the week. And, like, oh, man, that was one up pretty quickly. Um, Dude, there was a lot of great catches last week. Sutton had digs in the same game. Diggs had an awesome yes. catch. I mean, the Cortland Sutton one is crazy when you think about it from, like, a, like the dynamics of it, like how he caught it like this. The science. Like, like, yeah, like – because when that balls, I was like, there's no way he caught that, right? Like, I thought everyone called it incomplete and, you know – uh, I'm surprised you saw that, Dean. Was that on red zone? That was like in Denver territory. It was. <laughs> <laughs> they had to show uh, their contractually obligated to show Denver, and that was the only positive play they had the entire game. Yeah, so how many had, Denver plays did you get to see last week, Dean? I don't. I mean, I, you know, the less I get to see. That's uh, good. That's, know, there's yeah. there's the, the one pro. That's a huge pro for red zone is you don't have to watch the Broncos. <laughs> <laughs> the Russ thing is how many more years do they have for Russ? Like eight years? Like ten years? <laughs> Oh my God. I mean, it's, I don't want to say the guy's toast just yet, but oh man. It's, I mean, they're the only offense averaging less than 15 points per game in the entire NFL. It's, it's very bad. Most disappointing team this year. Is it fair to say it's a Denver? Uh, yeah. Ra- I mean, Rams coming off Super Bowl. Uh, yeah. Pretty, I would say, yeah. Cause the Rams, Rams are like useless, useless on offense. Their line is just putrid. Yeah. Yeah. I would say I would say Rams just because of the Super Bowl winner, but I, I think expectations the Broncos are very much in yeah. that in that orbit. <laughs> I yeah, got I go. got like everyone talks about their MVP tickets they have hidden away for Geno and whatnot, and they're not going to win. It's going to be Patrick Mahomes now. But uh, I have I, I have MVP. Russ I have Russ MVP tickets, and uh, trust me, I'm literally hiding those away. Like I don't <laughs> want to see them ever again. <laughs> Gino can get comeback player of the year, right? Yeah. I assume I, I've he's the favorite. I, so we talked about it a couple weeks ago. I think we might talk about it last week on the show. Um, did Bar- we mention? Did you mention Saquon Barkley? Yeah, yeah, we mentioned Barkley because remember we were t- I was talking to Braden about it and we were having a conversation because we were talking about because Gino really technically doesn't come back for anything except for the his career is in the grave, yeah. and that's what he's going to get comeback player of the year for. Uh, but uh, he's the favorite. I saw he's current favorite. D, D Staub in the chat also mentions the same thing I was going to say. I feel bad for George Pickens because he had a top three catch in NFL history earlier this year, but our civilization just forgets everything within 24 hours. Now, Listen, so. these guys are just aliens now, man. Like, yeah, they're, they're very like, good. As Speaking of aliens, uh, Martavis like, Bryant is, is going to be in the XFL. If you guys saw that, remember him? Uh, I, I mean, I, Rich remembers Mark Davis Bryant, but there's no way he is going to watch the XFL. Memphis <laughs> Bengals here makes me watch it. <laughs> Which it might be actually have a chat with, with your with your with your people with the people on the site and watch XFL and grind it Saturday out Saturday Saturday afternoon of the off season, Rich. You don't want to have a chat about XFL. <laughs> Negative. Uh, no. Hey, if there's the because the, was... the problem with all these football leagues is is the same problem we're seeing at the NFL. Like, there's not 32 good quarterbacks, and football with out no. good quarterback play is just it's just so bad. It's such a it's a totally different sport, right? Like it's mm-hmm. it's just so rough, and that's what that's the problem with all these leagues. It's just that you can't find viable quarterback play, man. Well, like I, I don't watch a lot of college football these days, but I know back in the day when I would watch it, like the Big Twelve. No matter how these guys would never go on to do anything, but they would have shootouts like forty to fifty <laughs> based upon schemes and whatever. Um, like, can't you scheme it up and like you know you still get high scoring shootouts in the XFL? Like because the fence like make the rules slant it for the offense. That's not something we can do. I, you ask Dagle. Like, just Jason Garrett scheming those things up, Dagle. It's not pretty. Uh, even though Bob Stoops, the coach of one of his teams, I, Bob Stoops was of the Renegades was the best 
uh, minor league football coach we've ever seen, and he does return to the XFL, so we may have some excitement here. I was outraged when, and I don't even care about the XFL, but seriously, you're trying to get people excited about a brand of football, and you who thinks you know? I know who's Jeff Fisher. Who, like honestly, like the worst football dude. The, 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 remember last year? Um, I don't even know what spring league we were talking about last year. Now <laughs> USFL. Remember Shea Patterson was the first overall pick, and like yes. Shea Patterson wasn't good in college, let alone like good for a developmental yeah. league. Like I was shocked when he was in. That's when you knew that league was going to tank the moment that happened. How the they- problem is, is like all these viable quarterback teams that are backups. Like think of like Chase Daniel, right? And how much? Like why would he ever go play in a league like that? He's just printing money in the NFL, yeah. just being a backup. Like you would need like that level of quarterback to go play in these, right? To like be incredible. But they're getting like the guys that like are like the practice squad guys. Like uh, I don't even know. Like you said, Shea Patterson. Like who are these guys, man? Like well, PJ Walker. Yeah. How old do you think uh, first round pick Martavis Bryant is uh, XFL? I think he was a first rounder in the XFL. <laughs> He's not thirty yet, right? He's exactly thirty. Okay. Yeah, turns thirty one in December. So I, as yeah. as long as they don't allow Paxton Lynch back, because watching him command a Jeff Fisher <laughs> offense in the USFL was the worst thing. Uh, Rich, um, Lance Lenore in the USFL had a 35% target share every week and you couldn't play him because the targets were so bad. Like he was like the worst DFS play. It was amazing. Yeah. So he was Kyle Pitts. He was yeah, it's Kyle Pitts. Yeah. Look at these Lance Lenore air yards. Buddy. You if you, if you want to, even though if you want to talk about a field to attack, like no one understands prayer yards in USFL DFS. So it was a good field to play. He had an edge. <laughs> I'm pulling up some of the weird teams. I mean, the best player, like the only, like one of the dudes that came out of it was Turpin. And like, he's a, they, like the best guy in your league was a kick returner. And, <laughs> and, and Turpin, to be fair though, like may even make Tony Pollard expendable next year as a free agent, because like Pollard's whole role was to return punts and kicks. And Turpin's awesome at that. He's a very good special teams player, which is pretty shocking. Cause he's like I- five, one. I'm sidetracking the show, but I just Googled the, the teams in the XFL. I know isn't the Rock's associated with the XFL, right? Isn't he like a part yes, of the? He's, so is this he's, an homage yeah. to the Rock? I know the Brahma Bulls, the, the San Antonio Brahmas. That, Ooh, that's a team. The Brahmas. Is that, though, is that Brahma Bull homage? Is that what that is? Yeah. That right? The only issue is that like San Antonio. Oh man, it's uh, it shouldn't oh. represent the Rock. It's a rough city. <laughs> Even though our own, is it isn't that where our own head chopper lives though? I believe. Chopper, I believe, is in San Antonio. He's a Texas yeah. guy. Yeah, he's a big Houston. Oh, he's a fan of Houston, so I don't. Yeah, but I think he's in San Antonio now. Last I've been there for a couple days. Remember last I recall, there? for a Super Bowl party that Dan Back should definitely bring back if you're listening. Um, we yeah. were having cocktails in the rooftop bar of Nashville, and Head Chopper mentioned he lives in San Antonio. I'm sorry for giving away your location, Chopper. If you're listening, <laughs> he wants to stay off the grid. He's yeah. not- <laughs> I mean, he lives in San Antonio. He's off the grid. Don't worry. <laughs> He's packing up as like, witness he, protection. Just, uh, to, <laughs> to, the spot. to nudge us back to the entire point of being here, though, um, yeah. CD Lamb is going to be like 30 to 40% rostered. And I don't know how you get there, given that he's fresh off a career high and catches and receiving yards. Like, it is an amazing spot. But remember, we were here with 30% rostered CD Lamb in tournaments earlier this year. And man, I, th- I think I'd just rather pivot on to Dalton Schultz, who's still carrying, like Reeves talked about him la- last week. Uh, Schultz is still carrying a 21.5% target share in his full games with Dak Prescott this year. So I do worry about CD Lamb in tournaments. Yeah, I mean, on FanDuel, CD Lamb's really expensive. Like, he's keeping company with the guys like Devontae Adams and Justin Jefferson. Well, he's not, I would say, no, he's a, he's a thousand cheaper than Justin Jefferson. He's in the, but he is right around Devontae Adams, AJ Brown. Um, and Amon Ra is a little cheaper. Amon Ra is a little cheaper on DraftKings, too, and he's probably a really good direct pivot. We talked about him and the, the, the spot he's in. I mean, CD Lamb, the metrics have been there all year, right? Like everything we were citing is just that Dallas was throwing the ball 25 times a game. And like, we, that's the thing. We, everyone cites all these usage stats, but like, don't put them into context, right? Because CD Lamb, this first 100 yard game of the season last year, when you throw the ball 45 times, all those great usage stats, now they, now we could do something with them. And that's what happened because all year long, he's been top three in target share, target rate per outrun. But you weren't getting the overall team volume to kind of elevate those to actual compete with the elite wide receivers at his position. When you have 48 dropbacks, 
Now we can take those and say, oh, now we got real some seasoned, uh, big uh, ceiling to cook with here. Um, so, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how he is played. Uh, I do think a lot of people still just play Jefferson. He's pretty interesting um, because of, you know, one, the trade for TJ Hawkinson, right, and what that's unlocked so far. Uh, through two games, all of Justin Jefferson's depth of target stuff has just gone completely nuts. And it could just be a two-game sample, but – Remember prior to acquiring TJ Hawkinson, this team had the lowest deep ball percentage in the NFL outside of the New York Giants. Uh, that's why they acquired. They needed another intermediate target. So they brought in TJ Hawkinson to just soak up all this underneath stuff and look at where TJ Hawkinson is getting targeted. Good for TJ Hawkinson. But what it's really been great for is Justin Jefferson. Over the past two weeks, 31% of his targets have been intermediate targets. 24% have been deep targets. Prior to, the, to acquiring TJ Hawkinson, he had an 18% intermediate target rate and a 9.9% deep target rate. He has as many targets on throws 20 yards or further downfield the last two weeks, seven of them, than he did the first eight weeks of the season. So now we're getting elite target share still from Justin Jefferson, but now we're getting like actual types of targets that are like rich in fantasy fat, mm-hmm. and we're getting huge runouts. That's how you get 193 yards. Uh, you know, instead of getting like where he was getting like the 10 for 104s, the 10 for 105s, uh, now he's he can turn into push 200 yards uh, with those types of targets. Uh, also, you know, Cowboys, number one in the league in pressure rate. Justin Jefferson has 37% of the Vikings targets when Kirk Cousins is pressured, uh, which is second among all wide receivers. Um, so, yeah, we can look at that and say, all right, well, who's the foxhole guy? It's going to so lob it up. You saw that as the player, right, on the catch? Yeah. Lob it up. <laughs> Lob it up. He's down there somewhere and make a play. Uh, it is interesting, though, the matchup. Dallas is really good against opposing wide receiver ones this year. You know, they have faced Jamar Jefferson. They faced Mike Evans. Cooper Cup did get them. A.J. Brown scored a touchdown. <clears throat> They're not giving up a lot of big yards to these guys. These teams also played a year ago, and Justin Jefferson only had 21 yards in that game. So that's going to be a fun to see, like, how that matchup goes. But we just did see Christian Watson score three touchdowns to <laughs> the Cowboys. So. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, by the way, shout out to the chat. Uh, just a couple of throwback names there have been thrown out there. Ben DiNucci, speaking of the Cowboys. DiNucci. Uh, AJ McCarron, who I think the last we saw uh, Brett Musburger was like slobbering over his girlfriend. Is that, that's the quarterback, right? <laughs> yes. I forgot oh, about that. Oh, yeah. oh, I forgot about that. <laughs> Brent Musburger, who just survived those comments uh, and now owns v Yes. Yeah. I think he's the Raiders play by play guy on the radio or something. I feel like he, that, that's what he does. Is yeah. that not correct? Does that sound that right? and, yeah, that and president of Vegas Sports Insider. I believe that's the acronym of VSIN. Yeah. There you oh, go. Goodness, I forgot all about that. <laughs> he had a live orgasm on the, the, <laughs> the championship game. He really, he really did. <laughs> he couldn't believe it. Like he's never seen a woman before. Oh no, he was he was ready to risk it all on live TV. <laughs> like he was... <laughs> uh we got anything else here as far as Dallas. If that happened from? now, man, like I mean, it would be everything. It'd be, he'd be all over Twitter. <laughs> Awfulannouncing.com, you know, the headline. In right. this game, there's a lot. Isn't there still a lot of stuff? We brought up Schultz. Uh, I don't Talk know. Talk about Schultz, Pollard, Jefferson, uh, I guess we did Dak throwing downfield. I love Dalvin Cook, even though it was kind of I, scatter do, shot. I do want to see I do want to see how projected ownership shakes out because I, I do like both Jefferson and Cook. I Right now, I'm just projecting Jefferson to be significantly higher rostered than Cook. Yeah. So, um, and then I don't think, you know, there is reason for everything we mentioned about Firehole or Foxhole, Justin Jefferson, and Dalvin Cook healthy receiving. There is reason to tag along Kirk Cousins here, but maybe, yeah, maybe that's too much. I don't know, but I, I like this game a lot, actually. It's a late game, though. Like Kirk Cousins, notorious. I know, like, night games, he's not good at. Um, this is 425. It, I mean, it does get dark at 4 p.m. now, so <laughs> I don't that know counts. <laughs> You're under the lights at by the time it hits 3:30. Do we have a Dak take? He's just sort of fine. Is that kind of where we're at? Like he's he's not something you definitely need. He's cheap enough, I guess. But like Richard's saying, he's he's throwing downfield more. But we've also only seen two healthy games from him, uh, yeah. and he's he's still not. You know, he does have four and a half carries in back to back games, so he is adding a little more of a rushing floor, but. Even though the stacking is clear between Schultz and Lamb, that's where all the targets are going. I still don't. I still don't think so for me. All right, producer Steve, uh, fire up those Thrive props. Do want to tell you guys about 
uh, Thrive Fantasy, the sponsor of the show, join in on the fantasy prop action this NFL season with Thrive Fantasy. Should note, by the way, obviously, NFL podcast, you guys are going to want to hit the NFL props. Uh, we're going to be talking about um, one of their featured contests over there. Uh, 20, uh, there's 20 props. You got to pick 10 of them. You got to go 10 and 0 if you want to really, really win some money. I think it's $100,000 prize pool and 20, uh, 20 or 25 the first. That's what it was last week. I believe it, that is where it's at again this week. And just want to mention they have other sports as well, too NBA, um, MLB when that's in season, obviously, all the sports, anything you can think of. Uh, easy to play, no salary cap style contest that revolves around an over under style player prop. Uh, again, each prop has a fantasy score associated with that prop. The riskier the prop happens to be, the higher the fantasy score. You rack up the most points for your share of the prize uh, the prize pool. And we're going to give you a nice sweet deposit bonus. Of course, we won't be telling you about it if we're not going to be hooking you up with a nice deposit bonus. Use the promo code GRINDERS, that's G-R-I-N-D-E-R-S, when you sign up for a deposit bonus up to $250 as well as free tickets. Uh, how do those free tickets work? If you deposit up to $499 or $100 to $499, you get two free $20 contest tickets. If you deposit $500 or more, you get six free $20 contest tickets in addition to uh, the $250 deposit bonus. All right. Uh, we do have up uh, on screen all the props that we're looking at as far as this week. John, hopefully you've taken a peek um, and you, uh, you have a side, you have a lean. we got to be ambitious. We want to get a fair bit of points as well. What do you like on the board? You get more points if Saquon Barkley goes over 91 and a half. Uh, let's start there. Let's let's get take the 110. We talked about all the reasons why he's pretty much the chalk on this slate, and we love him. Um, he can run for three yards a carry and get there. Yeah, it's <laughs> what what an amazing 20-point bonus we get. It's like a free 20-point handicap. Uh, and then scroll down a hair. Uh, I think I saw. Oh, uh, Rich, if you see something, point it out. Uh, let's see. Gosh, Josh Jacobs, is a, that's an aggressive number for even, but I do kind of like Jacobs this week too. Is Stafford going to complete 23 and a half passes? I mean, you're not, it's only 85 points for what it's worth. Less is 115. I'm just, you know, it's just a disaster as far as that offense overall. Maybe some garbage time nonsense. I'd love to know he's complete them too. <laughs> like, who's catching they're, these passes? They're Let's gonna. The they're gonna play. Is, <laughs> is it the whole plane's built out of Tyler Higby targets right now? Yeah. <laughs> or uh, Ben Skowernick getting 14 yards on seven targets? Just that's one of the first ones that kind of jumps out to me. Uh, yeah, well, I, I do worry. Under on Diggs, under on Diggs touchdown. Uh, if, if the weather is insane, play the weather angle. You get 110 points. You get a positive on that. So I'm, I'm yep. okay. I, I think they're getting sharper. These numbers are these numbers are sharp. Um, DJ Moore, you know, we haven't seen his his target share without Robbie Anderson and Christian McCaffrey from Baker Mayfield, but we still saw the throws from Baker Mayfield, and uh, those were not those are not accurate or good, Dean. So I worry about DJ Moore, uh, maybe less honestly in this game. Why is five, five and a half catches me? is a pretty aggressive number for DJ Moore though? For Baker yeah. Mayfield, well, didn't DJ Moore catch like? Was, did you just say you might have just said this? And I apologize. I was looking for Barkley as a projected total uh, rushing yards. He caught like six of fourteen passes. Like, what was the? It was like a. It was a nice percentage, but the pie was so weird. You know, is this sound about right? Last week, Carolina completed like fourteen passes, or there's fourteen. Uh, they, they, they threw sixteen. They only threw sixteen passes. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, PJ, PJ completed only ten of them, but that's because, like, also they just didn't need to run mm -hmm. at all. Yeah, but we've we've also seen DJ Moore come back to life the past two games. Unfortunately, from poor quarterback play, uh, he's totaled six catches for less than fifty yards the past two weeks. Like, it's not been pretty. Uh, Burrow's passing yards pretty interesting. We, the under. Uh, you look at his passing yardage without Jamar Chase the two two games. Uh, in week one, he got there yardage-wise on the Steelers because they ran like 100 plays that game. But, you know, the Steelers really kind of one of those teams that play. They played too high, 60% of the, the snaps against Burrow, which has kind of been that you know the bugaboo all year. So that one might be a little bit interesting, uh, especially with the injuries the Bengals have on defense. So like, maybe that one. I mean, this – I mean, why is there even a Najee Harris prop? Like <laughs> – 
I mean, this this goes to show you how down bad you are if you took Najee Harris in fantasy. It's we're 11 weeks in, and his rushing prop is 49 and a half. Uh, the, the Steelers had no carries of 20 yards going into last week's game, and then they had four against the Saints, which is both a detriment to the Saints defense and the Steelers offense. Uh, yeah, and Joe Burrow, you know, T.J. Watt back on the field, it's, it's such a small sample. It's only two games. But now um, opposing quarterbacks are averaging 6.3 yards per attempt. They're averaging over nine yards per attempt with T.J. Watt off the field since week two. Uh, he, he has made a, quite a big difference. Do we have since you mentioned it, Rich? Uh, Harris six five on DK, but Warren is uh, is four nine on DK, five seven on Fanduel. Is I mean, do we expect an unseating to some extent here? As far as a uh, you know, he's right getting just to- he's getting just enough touches to like impact Najee Harris, but not enough touches on his own. Yeah, but you know, you look at the past two weeks where he's right around thirty five percent of the backfield touches his last two games. That's just not enough work. And uh, I forgot what I was going to say. Go on. By the way, uh, Barkley projected for 97 yards on a Wednesday night, according to Derek Hardy's The Blitz, for what it's worth. Uh, six shorts of Derek Henry, who's – I don't know. When is Derek Henry even playing? I'm not Tomorrow. even sure. Okay, there you go. <laughs> I, I don't know who's playing Thursday. That game is supposed oh. to be like 20 degrees too. Um, That's good one. I, I was going to say on Najee Harris and Jalen Warren, also Steelers' third lowest team total. Like they're, they're more than field goal dogs uh, with the Bengals coming off a bye on the road. It tells you we're probably going to get a pretty pitiful output from the Steelers' offense this week. Rams Saints 38 and a half total. We talked about that. Good Rams God, offense. that game. It's in a dome, too. Like, what if this was outdoors? Um, why is Dalton like, what are we looking at? They're like, yeah, we, we, we want to stick with that guy. <laughs> like, what, what is Winston doing in practice that, like, you're looking at Dalton, like, yeah, that's our guy? Like, it, I was surprised. I thought there was going to be an unseating here as well. I mean, the last like, two weeks, Rich? the last two weeks, that offense has been, and they've scored on two. They've scored a touchdown on two of 20 drives the past two weeks. Just it, it, completely toothless. Like Alvin Kamara looked like he was kind of back, right? Like for a yeah. stretch. And then, man, I mean, this – like and Chris Olave, like these guys have been torpedoed like by this offense, the, just like this run. I mean, even, even Olave, you look at like kind of his game log and like, you know, we've been citing how good he's played. And there haven't been like a lot of spike ceiling weeks lately here for, for him either. So – I mean, this you're, you're, we're dragging down the guys we care about, Andy. Like, we, we need some production. I'd rather just have Jameis come into the hair on fire and we can just get, like, the goofy run out. But this game in particular, like, is this is slappers only, man. Uh, golden eyes. This is rough. I don't know how many touch – how we can get touchdowns in this game. So, so, what you're say, so what you're saying is, Rich, you're not ready for Juwan Johnson chalk week on DraftKings at 3,100 is what you're no, saying. No, I mean, his routes fell all the way off. But here's the thing about Juwan Johnson, and I don't mind if anyone wants to chase touchdowns at tight end because who the hell cares, right? You're going to play a touchdown <laughs> or bust guy. But, like, you have to put the context, like, so Juwan Johnson led the Saints in targets, right? How many weeks is he going to out-target all of, Chris, you know, Chris Olave, Alvin Kamara, and Jarvis Landry? Like, how many of those games are there going to be over the course of an NFL season, right? I think we just got it. Saints are three and seven. Like, what's the point? I, I mean, I guess I know Wentz is not a part of their future either. They're, but... they're in the NFC South. They think yeah. they're alive. I guess it's not over, right? No. Why do you think Mariota hasn't been benched yet? They can't yes. bench him when they're, when they're competing. Otherwise, they absolutely would have sat his ass already. Is five and six leading that? Is that what's going on? Five and the Bucks are five and five. The Bucks, yeah. Somehow oh, the already. Bucks, the Bucks, who and they who beat all. Of, they, oh no, they lost to Carolina. I'm sorry, but they beat the yeah. Saints. They beat the Falcons. The fucking Bucks. <laughs> five, five and five. You listen, but the Bucks. You like this is all setting up. Like the Bucks are gonna have. They're gonna like play the Giants in Week One of the playoffs and be a favorite, like a road favorite. Yeah. Yeah. Or no, they won't be because they'll be. They'll probably host though. But they're gonna end up playing like the Giants. They're going to probably play like a team like the Giants in week one of the, uh, the divisional round. Or week wild one. Round. Wild Buddy, wild, wild, wild the Bucks are making the Super Bowl because <laughs> everyone sucks in the NFC. But, I mean, that's where we are. Like, the Bucks are going to meander their way through the season, play one of these teams that, like, is, like we don't really believe in. And, like, you know, like, what if the Bucks play, like, the Giants and then, like, in round two they play the Vikings? Like, yeah. That's realistic. That could happen. They'll be, they'll be favoring both those games. Mm-hmm. Fox is rooting against the Bucks, right? Don't they have a Brady? Like, wouldn't he like jump in the booth or do something for uh, for Fox if they get eliminated? Is that not a thing? When he retires, 
Um, no guarantee he retires after this year, but they said when he retires or ever. Um, oh, should, uh, also like Greg Olson because Greg Olson's incredible. He jumped it, up the ranks really fast. Yeah, he's good. His so I on one hand I feel bad for Greg Olson because it's not fair because he is good at his job. Uh, and for Brady to just come in and usurp him on a higher team for Fox, that's not right. It's politics. At the same time, <laughs> I, I, I have a personal uh, vendetta against his cadence. He sounds like a teacher. He sounds like a nature documentary. Um, <laughs> someone who speaks on them where he like gets really whispering and he details incredibly about like the cornerback sneaking up. I don't like it. It creeps me out. That's, that's, only my, that's my only complaint about Greg Olson. I just don't understand, like, again, like, get your money, good job. They, they paid Brady uh, $375 million for 10 years. And, like, does this conversation take place in any household? Hey, do you want to watch, like, Bears, Bucks? No. You know Tom Brady's announcing it? Oh, yeah, I'm going to watch it now. Like, Well, they, they, pro- they, they saw Drew Brees try and speak for a year and said, okay, do somebody do something about this immediately. <laughs> I got to ask you guys, though, about this Rams-Saints game. Because, you know, when I, I'm doing the write-ups in the game and stuff, and I'm, I'm, I'm looking at these players and stuff, and I'm like, you know what? Like, you know, what is Allen Robinson's price in DFS this week? Dude, <laughs> he is 5'6 on DraftKings, and he's 6'6 six, six on FanDuel. What the hell? Outrageous. He, he's more expensive. Look at the – on DraftKings, he's more expensive than Jacoby Myers, uh, Adam Thielen, Darno Mooney. Uh, you know, all these – like, he's 600 more than Darius Slayton, who Dale brought up. Uh like how like, we've <laughs> we, we've discussed how because DraftKings has flannel special rainmakers packs coming out for the holidays two hundred dollars a pack rich they're more worried about that than Allen Robinson Robinson's price for sure. <laughs> but how how is he priced up on both sides? Like did they like did they just like set Allen Robinson's price in week one and like just no one's ever adjusted for the season that's happened so far? No one's played him, so they just left him untouched. The algorithm didn't see him. Yeah, I mean, he's more than Myers on FanDuel. He's more than he's more than Devontae Smith on FanDuel. Like, man, wow. All right. We should uh, run it back and give our favorite plays position by position. Do check out Thrive, Thrive Fantasy. Uh, Grinders, G-R-I-N-D-E-R-S. Uh, again, uh, sign up. Uh, deposit bonus up to $250 as well as those tickets we talked about. G-R-I-N-D-E-R-S, Grinders. Uh, John, some uh, some quarterbacks we've yet to discuss that are jumping on the page you want to play this week. What do you got? Uh, go to Rich. We've talked about literally my quarterback pool. Unless <laughs> unless Rich is going to convince me into Jalen Hurts, um, no. We've literally talked about who I'm going to play. Rich? I mean, I think Jalen Hurts is going to – like, I feel like nobody wants to play him, right? Like, he, I feel like he has no buzz at that price point, like, for the content. And, and all he's done is consistently get there for fantasy, like, the entire year. And we got the Eagles coming off of a loss. Like, they, they had to come up with a little bit. And, and against the Colts, like, the Colts had this magical – like, dude, Jim Irsay was throwing a party like he was some kind of genius. Like, <laughs> dude, if they never played Sam Ellinger, they probably have at least one more win. Like, they probably beat the Commanders for sure with Matt Ryan in that game. And, like, you, you're the one that sabotaged this thing. What was so, that score, uh, by the way? They didn't announce until like, warmups. They announced like the last second. I don't like this, especially going from the NBA world. I don't. That's that's yeah. bad enough. But you, you I didn't even know until the game that. was going on that Matt Ryan was in the game. Like I was like, oh shit, Matt Ryan's in. <laughs> Let's not normalize that. I know it was Matt Ryan, so who cares? But I don't want that normalized going forward. We got to yeah, get luck- luckily we weren't playing any of them, but. But yeah, uh, but you never have like situations like that very often in the NFL where they can even pull something like that with the quarterback position. Yeah, you well, don't. You don't let's that. be honest. You don't have much situations like the Colts in general. What happened this past week between Jonathan <laughs> Taylor? We'll get there in a second. Uh, between Matt Ryan, between the Colts in general, going on in the NFL. Also, it is that's the thing. It is reminiscent of just three weeks ago when Jalen Hurts against the Steelers and no one gave him credit. No one rostered them because thinking, okay, we're not going to get pushed back at all. And so no one played them. And then Hertz goes for 280 and four touchdowns against him at 3%. And even the opposite, like the Colts have Colts for the entire part of the season have been miserable. Uh, Up until last week, they led for six offensive snaps in the second half. And up until last week, the Eagles never trailed for a snap in the second half. And like, this could be like, this could be a stomping man. And you get it, you Dean, you get him in a dome. 
Uh, you know, uh, yeah. you get a Ooh, mobile quarterback and, in a dome. Yeah, it's and you get crazy. a you, you get a concerted target share because we're not worried about Jack Stoll stealing. Yeah, um, we remove a guy, so like yeah. we remove a guy from the equation. It already only went to three players. Okay. I was going to ask. Rich did talk Stoll, me into it actually. Stoll, Jackson, and Cal Katera. Yeah, Cal Any of these guys Katera. worth noting? So Jack Stoll uh, came in for Dallas Goddard in Week Four whenever Goddard was injured and ran. Uh, a route on 37% of dropbacks over Grant Calcaterra. But that was Calcaterra's first game back from injury as well. And so I believe he profiles as the the more receiving Locker, tight end. Yeah, yeah at, the, at the same time, um, it's probably going to be a timeshare in my opinion. Mm-hmm. So Yeah, none of those guys are doing what Goddard did. Yeah. So. And Goddard yeah. was already a guy. Or 2-5, that, that's why I was asking. We couldn't even find targets for Goddard. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, you know, could, like, you know, Goddard cleared six targets twice. So Hertz, like Hurts, AJB, Jalen Hurts, uh or no, and uh Devonta Smith, and you run it back with John Taylor Paris Campbell. Okay. We may well, be Devonta Smith asking. was gonna be a guy I was gonna bring up because Indy plays zone coverage at the sixth highest rate in the NFL. They play cover three at the second highest rate in the NFL because our guy Gus Bradley never met a down he didn't want to run cover three on. <laughs> uh against zone coverage, Devontae Smith is actually out targeting AJ Brown. He's got 25% team target share. And it goes up to 26% against cover three zone looks. So I do like some Devontae Smith this week too as well. And he is cheaper than Allen Robinson. <laughs> yeah, I don't – yeah, the overreaction in Allen Robinson is pretty outrageous. But let's talk about uh, running backs. The running backs we've not talked about just yet, Rich. Um, who are you liking this week as far as running backs? Our projections seem to really like Joe Mixon. For what it's worth, the guy that just had five touchdowns. The projections like him, Dean. <laughs> well, I mean, our projections generally don't assume like what because you had five touchdowns last week, you're going to get five again this well, week. Well, expected point models have. Lo- I mean, listen. Yeah. Um, the, <laughs> yeah. He still didn't even get all his expected point regression out of the way. He's still like 26 points below for the season in, in like uh, expected point scored. Uh, he's t- he's he's annoyingly tied with T Higgins now the past two games too without Jamar Chase. Annoyingly, because like I, I'm probably not going to play him in the slate, and I'm going to piss myself off. I mean, you can play him. I think he's a lot better play on DraftKings than he is FanDuel. Where I think he's nine K on FanDuel, and I think he's seven four. On yes, DraftKings. Yeah. yeah, that's a lot more palatable, I believe, than to pay up for nine. Like if I'm already paying nine, I might as well find that seven hundred to get the safe one because we have a larger sample this season of Joe Mixon not being able to run the football well than the sample that we saw as a huge favorite home favorite against Carolina, right? Yeah. So, I mean, for 9K, I think if you're going to play in some tournaments, it's fine. But I don't think he's like a guy you have to jam in over there. DraftKings, because the one cool thing about Mixon uh, when you incorporate DraftKings is he's about to blow past his career highs and targets and catches. Like, he's already there. He has 50 targets, 38 catches. His career highs are 55 targets and 43 catches. Might get there this week. So you are getting those that, that catch bonus. At, uh, and then with Jamar Chase being out, he's getting involved in the passing game. Besides Mixon, who else do you want to talk about as far as running backs? I mean, we did talk about, like, Kamara's kind of interesting just because if you think the Rams really just have no fight, right, like how the Rams score points. <laughs> Like, it could just be a high-touch game, right? Like we saw from James Conner. Like, James Conner wasn't particularly good in that game against the Rams last week, but you gotta, he just kept getting the football. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of what you're hoping for, I guess, if you're looking at Kamara at this game at home. Uh, I think you can keep playing Ramondre Stevenson. I'll let Dave talk about Nick Chubb. And then uh, both Washington guys, I think, are – you're not going to be able to play these guys in cash because of the split, but this is a team that, that ran the ball over 40 times last week. They're probably in a spot where if they want to do that again, Sure. Uh, we we just target Houston every week, right? And if JD McKissick's going to play, we know we have basically this even 50 50 split. And both guys got goal line carries, so you can kind of pick your poison here of playing these guys. But I do think both Washington guys are interesting tournament plays too, uh, at their price points. You got a preference, John, as far as Gibson versus Robinson? Gibson 5 6 on DK, Robinson 5 3. Um, I lean Robinson, but more on FanDuel just because we're getting those touchdowns. 39 carries the past two games. 
And like like Reeb said, six different running backs have scored at least 23 fantasy points against Texans this year. So uh, they will, even though and Gibson was tackled inside the five this year, this past game, um, most likely they lean on Robinson in that area of the field. So I think sneaking Robinson in is a, a, a great choice. Uh, if we play Jalen Hurts, maybe if we don't, because there is a chance, like Reeb said, the Colts just get the shit kicked out of them. But like this Eagles rushing yard stat without Jordan Davis is probably going to catch on and get him steamed, Jonathan Taylor, by the time we kick off on Sunday. So, so we'll see since it is volatile. But in Philadelphia's last four games, Ezekiel Elliott rushed for a season high, 81 yards. Uh, Jalen Warren and Najee Harris combined for six yards per carry. Damian Pierce rushed for 139 yards. And the efficiency wasn't great, but you saw a Monday night. Washington bullied them for 40 running back carries and two rushing scores. And more importantly, Jeff Saturday just said, threw his hands up in the air and said, I'm just going to use my best players. Whatever. Yeah. He put Matt Ryan back in. He only threw to Michael Pittman and Paris Campbell. And Jonathan Taylor not only – you know, 22 or 26 running back touches, but a season high, uh, 90% route rate on their dropbacks, just running out there every single down. So Taylor, I think also has a high floor, even though both of you used him against me in our tournament. And I, tr- <laughs> I tried to pivot off of the Judas Smith Schuster instead uh, into flex too. And oh, you me, see though, no, Vandal wasn't having that shit. Like he was seven yeah, day last week. It was I not working out. It was not working okay. out. Uh, I, was hoping, I was hoping for two touchdowns and that did not work out. Um, anyways, though, John Taylor on DraftKings, I think, is a higher floor than perceived. Nick Chubb, if everyone's scared off this game because of snow, like, mind you, the Bills, since their Week 7 bye, have allowed 6.2 yards per carry. Aaron Jones, Dalvin Cook, and Michael Carter alone combined for 338 rushing yards, two touchdowns, and eight catches the past three weeks against the Bills. It is an amazing spot. To run Nick Chubb out there. Now, if it is snowy, everyone's going to logically connect to the ground game and maybe play Nick Chubb. So we got to watch the ownership till Sunday morning. But I love Nick Chubb regardless in this matchup. Also, Devin Singletary, he's still commanding these backfield touches ahead of James Cook. He's 5,800, scores two touchdowns last week. He goes to 5,700 on Fandle. I don't know how that works. So Nick Chubb, Devin Singletary, skinny stack, absolutely. And then the 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 picture you can paint for Josh Jacobs receiving floor makes a lot of sense because Darren Waller, Hunter Renfro on IR, and Jacobs' route rate has now increased in three consecutive games. His 68% route rate last week was his second highest of the season. Plus, he's still uh, no running back behind Jacobs has handled more than two carries since week three. Uh, in terms of like getting a lead, which the Raiders, I understand, you know, they don't win games, but they still get leads. They're now playing the Broncos. Uh, run funnel defense and just leaning on Jacobs. That's what they do. So game script and everything works in Jacobs favor this week as well. Loser gets relegated. Who, like who says no, like we got to relegate the loser in that game, right? Broncos Raiders. I mean, be- they are the, the Raiders are at least taking up a lot of money. They, they got a lot of the <laughs> NFL cap soaked up in this shitty team right now. Kicked off the <laughs> Island. Um, also remember Jordan Davis splits. They were in the worksheet three weeks ago. So all those. Cool oh, nice. Now. Okay. I, I didn't know that. Good for yep. you. They, so you can read the worksheet for free this week too, but uh, three weeks ago they were highlighted when he was originally injured. Now he's like the, the talk of all the splits, three games too late. There you go. You're on top <laughs> of it there, Rich. Uh, receivers, what do you got from Rich? Uh, yeah, this is going to be, like I said, we ran down the guys out this week, right? Like this, You're going to see some funky wide receiver plays this week for sure. Uh, not just in season longs, but in DFS. Uh, I don't know what happens with the Denver wide receivers. We'll see. Hopefully maybe one day we'll get – the Kendall Hinton, you know, tour uh, again. I would love to see retribution for Kendall Hinton. He was uh, the quarterback, right? That was yep. the quarterback for one week. And like, go back to that spot. Like, people like dog on that game. Like, I remember it, it had a tweet, and like, people, you didn't watch the Kendall Hinton game. It was the worst quarterback game ever happened. Like, imagine if you're Kendall Hinton, right? Put into this spot. <laughs> the dude is he's he's converted college quarterback, Wildcat quarterback that is playing, trying to make it, cut his teeth in the NFL, trying to make a position change as wide receiver. The team gets COVID during the week. They bring him up to the practice squad and say, you have to quarterback an NFL game. And, like, people, like, think he's, like, some kind of joke. Like, imagine you being put in that spot. Like, any yeah. player being in that spot. Like, he was in the worst possible situation he could. Like, he deserves a, almost a medal for what he has to come out and do from in football it's, stance. Like, it's an impossible situation. And he's, like, a it, punching bag for it. It's, it's hard enough this time of year – to keep everything straight, given that 
dark early clicks go down, you know, cause people are losing their <laughs> fantasy leagues. So season, season long clicks and views go down. No big deal. Even though all of us are still in the betting and DFS street. So everything stays the same. It's hard enough though, but the pandemic year, man, it still gives me PTSD when we mentioned that, because I remember I was at a poker table and uh, my fantasy life notifications went nuts. And you look down and say, it says Melvin Gordon starting at quarterback. Um, Kendall Hinton wasn't even announced as a starter yet. They just said, we're going to play Melvin Gordon quarterback, which tells you they're going to run 40 times. And like, mm-hmm. I, I think I about had a mental breakdown because then you got to update everything. And it's a late Saturday night. You're on wine as well. And um, it was a disaster. And good for Kendall Hinton. I did. I do recall saying bench him because there's no way he actually throws the ball. To be fair, he. I think he went one of nine in that game, right, Rich? I can't remember. It was rough, yeah. but like you know, but people. It wasn't like, his fault was, though. It was not was his like, fault. Yeah, he was like a joke. To, like practice squad guy. Like, yeah, the dude is in a, a in this like the, a no win situation, man. Yeah, like, and it's like it, they for accountant to be a line cook. Yeah, it was just a, it was insane, man. And uh, I hope he does get a chance to get retribution. He he did miss practice today, though, so it looks like we won't get to see him. But uh, you know, the Raiders, the, the slot thing with the Raiders has been real, man. We saw it again at Paris Hilton last week, so hopefully we do get him back. But uh, DraftKings, Dean, so is cheap on a few guys. I know you wanted some cheap guys. Yeah, Terry McLaurin is five nine. Yeah, on DraftKings, ludicrous pricing. Uh, and he did play on Monday night, so he was grandfathered in. But uh, <laughs> over the past four weeks, 32% team target share, uh, fourth among all wide receivers. 56% share of team air yards. That's first among all receivers. He's been targeted on 27% of his routes. That's sixth. He's played really good defenses over that span, too. Uh, he's going against Houston Texans. Not so good of a defense. Uh, they're allowing a league high 9.7 yards per target to opposing wide receivers and 15.1 yards per catch. They just don't face a lot of targets because everyone's running down their throat in the second half. Uh, Nico Collins in that same game, Dean, only went up 100. You know, in the six full games that he and Brandon Cooks have played, he has 321 receiving yards to 272 for Brandon Cooks. He has more receiving yards than him in five straight games that they've played together, and their target per route rate is almost identical. And then Paris Campbell on DraftKings is 4,300. Matchup not so good, but – Target shares in his last three games at Matt Ryan, 19.6%, 29.3%, 33.3%. 45% of the receptions the Eagles have allowed to opposing wide receivers have come from the slot. That's the fifth highest rate. He is only a DraftKings only play because he's getting no yards for target and no yards for catch. He just needs a lot of targets to get there. But those guys are cheap on DraftKings, Dean. You can fit those guys in some lineups. You'll be happy to know that Kendall Hinton uh, hit my threshold of an optimals on a Wednesday night. He's hit 55%. I maxed out at 55%. Uh, ben Skarnick uh, is at 39%. And I don't know how this happened. We, I mean, Wednesday night, it's not perfect. But uh, Jahan Dotson is popular? That can't don't be do right, it. can it? Don't do it. Do that not can't do be, it. I mean, that's, I mean he, yeah. was, he was already before he returned from injury, because I get these season-long questions. Like, he scored three touchdowns on three end zone targets. He was literally living on touchdowns. He did nothing else. Uh, and now we have, like Rich said, Taylor Heineke or uh, Terry McLaurin's target share has increased in four consecutive games, four consecutive season high marks from Taylor Heineke. Uh, yeah, don't do it. John Dawson's not your guy. I heard this too. Robin Chat said he said Paris Hilton and not Paris Campbell. I thought I heard that too. And I'm like, did he say Paris Hilton? <laughs> he did, but we're in week 11. Let it happen. <laughs> <laughs> What do you got, John? Kendall Hinton, Hinton Paris, Hinton, Paris Hilton. Uh, you know, I, mean, I was thinking about Hinton and Hilton too much. Um, I'm not. I'm not kidding. Rich took all mine. Uh, literally all mine. Uh, Nico Collins, Terry McLaurin are, abs- are absolutely in my pool. I mean, Nico Collins. How is he 4100 on DraftKings? That price is absolutely insane. Like that's your cheap value of the week. And then I already mentioned Darius Slayton at 5K. So. My wide receiver pool is significantly lower than my running back pool this week. That's going to be my toughest to dwindle down. All right. We'll get to our movies in a second. Uh, I have to recommend a movie for you guys to watch. We'll mm-hmm. discuss it next week. But we do have to knock out tight ends. Uh, Jawan Johnson was mentioned in passing. I think it was by you, John. Um, yeah, he is right now popping on DK, which seems outrageous. Um, but that's the nature of the slate, I suppose. Friermuth and Joko, if he plays, is interesting. For the 19th week in a row, maybe Foster Moreau could be kind of sort of someone interesting. Did you like any of this tight end nonsense? 
Yeah, I mean, Juwan Johnson, his route rate has gone down the past two games as Adam Troutman has returned from injury. But even then, last week, 66%, which is not a threshold we should give a shit about usually, but it's the tight end in week 11, so whatever. He scored touchdowns in back-to-back games. I'll take it. He's an athletic player. And then let's wait on Corey Davis's injury since we've seen Tyler Conklin basically be an every down tight end um a route on over 80 percent of dropbacks the last three weeks over cg ozoma as well and Corey davis was injured so davis didn't practice on wednesday if he's still out i think the fallout really is garrett wilson still leading in targets and tyler conklin leading like this tight ends room significantly in routes run. Uh, I believe the last time they played the Patriots just a couple of weeks ago, both these players were in winning lineups and the slant and Millie maker on DraftKings too, because they were so cheap. So yeah, I think that's a, it's a clever fallout to watch for. Rich tight ends. Uh, yeah. I like Conklin uh, as a dart of Davis is out. Uh, I think you can go back to Dulcich. I mean, the playing time was there. You just had a, a crappy run out Raiders. Bad defense, uh, you can still target there, especially like we said, if all these receivers are going to be out for the Broncos. Like, you know, it's easy to get there on him. Uh, we don't know what we'll see. What happens at Mandrews? We'll see if Mandrews plays. Obviously, if he doesn't, Isaiah likely will be really popular. Higby doesn't have a good matchup, but he's only 4K on DraftKings, and he has 16 more targets than any other player on the Rams outside of Cooper Cup. So, like, why like hunt for the guys like these other like why play whack mole these guys they haven't been good like Stafford's already throwing a bunch to this guy right and he's 4k and matchup ain't good but 4,000 is 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 doable uh Pat for has got to get there eventually right <laughs> I mean like we keep bringing him up dude he's he's right there on Fanduel too like right or on DraftKings he's right behind Cole Komet like it makes so much sense and we haven't seen the jailbreak game from Kenny Pickett like at one of these games. Kenny Pickett's going to have to throw a ton. They're not going to be able to pull off 32 running back carries and eight scrambles again. And, and that's the case without Chase Claypool. What happens is target share. So Pat Fryer is a pretty awesome play. All right. Uh, if you guys won't want to get take part in our movie bet shenanigans, uh, we appreciate y'all listening. We're going to talk a little movies for a second. Uh, I wasn't really sure how, to, how kind I should be or how nice I should be or how mean I should be. Uh, so I, I kind of like uh, I selected – and I also wasn't sure what you guys have seen. Like, I don't know how uh, if you're cinephiles or not. I, I assume you guys are, but I don't know. Like, I'm not going to sit there and recommend like Shawshank Redemption. It's like, well, if you guys haven't seen Shawshank, I, I'm sure you've seen it before. So, what's the point? Of having I mean, I think there's probably low odds you'll find a movie that none of the three have seen, right? And like, or all, all three. I mean, like, oh, I, okay. I think I kind of think the whole point is to be fun. Like, all three uh, haven't seen. I, I whatever your definition of fun is, like. Whether it's Cobra or something like shitty action movie, which I love shitty action movies, I yeah. think that's the whole point. But it's up to you. I don't. I, I, I'm setting the precedent. I feel like I, I feel like I should be mostly nice because eventually I'm going to lose one of these. Like for sure, it's going to come back and haunt me. I don't want to watch anything good. I'll say that. Oh, okay, that's weird. So I, you don't want to watch a good movie? What a no. strange. No, give me the wrench. Give me the longest yard Adam Sandler remake. Give me, <laughs> give me something fun and bad. Okay, well, that I wasn't prepared for that. Producers, give me the room. Well. Give me something. Everything has to be also shorter than like two and a half hours. Okay, yeah, I'm not going to give you like yeah a, a three yeah, and a half hour anime right. series. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Rise, Roar, Revolt. We're not watching that. <laughs> I don't even know what that is, but uh, yeah, I'm <laughs> no, definitely not watching watch it. It's very enjoyable. Please don't give it to me next week. I won't. Uh, it's, it's three hours, so we won't be doing it. I, I was thinking football, and I was thinking like football. Oh, this is a football show. Maybe foot movies. What's what's the worst football movie? And then I was thinking, like, we could talk about the greatest athlete of our, of our generation, you know, Air Bud, uh, five different sports. Of course, Golden Receiver, uh, seventh <laughs> inning fetch, that's the baseball one, a World Pup for soccer, World Cup for <laughs> quarter. He's a great volleyball player as well, spikes back. Um, but then, you know, the Kevin James football movie with Sean Payton, I thought would okay. be Okay, kind of now we're talking. That seems like they yeah, watched it already. I think it came up on this podcast. I have watched it. It's not good, but I'll rewatch it and oh, take notes. If you've seen it before, I don't want to. Yeah, okay. So we'll, we'll put that in the back pocket right now. But it would be worth it to make Rich watch it. So I, I think that'd be fun. I think Dangle talked about Sean Payton's hairpiece at one point on this show. <laughs> Absolutely, <enough. laughs> I have. <laughs> it's probably, and you know what? I'll be a sport and I'll watch it with you guys. And so just so I can have the conversation because I've never seen it before either. I can't imagine. Um, and I was, I was thinking, I was thinking about Little Giants, and that just that just angers me. Are you guys aware of Little Giants? Yes, maybe. What, what do you mean angers you? That's a good movie. Because 
Al Bundy, Ed O'Neill is the worst defensive coordinator since like 1972. <laughs> the annexation of Puerto Rico, it's a tie game. They're on their own one yard line. They have to go 99 yards. There's one play left. There's a tie game or they're down or whatever. Ed O'Neill decides to blitz and he bites on the fake. Like, put all your guys in the 50 yard line. What are we doing? Is there That's no a big brother move? move? That's what big brothers do. Oh my gosh. You know the play, right? The annexation of Puerto Rico. Like, why is everybody biting on the fake? Do they have to go 99 yards? It just tilts me. Like, I'm I happy mean, for Rick but you know. To be fair, the number one overall pick in the actual NFL draft was in the balance, and Greg Williams sent cover zero. So <laughs> yes. I don't, those, those, those plays do exist. They're real to life. Ed O'Neill approves. Uh, he, he liked that. He liked that call. Uh, so I, I have a kind of a good – so, okay, I, I made a list of some good movies, and somebody suggests The Cooler. Do you guys – is everybody seen The Cooler or nobody's in The Cooler? The Cooler no, is a fabulous the gambling movie. I have not seen The Cooler. I haven't either. So, see, I okay. haven't either. Oh my gosh! This is a, there it is. So you found uh, it. We all haven't seen. Okay. Okay. So okay, it'll okay, it'll, it'll be the core then. I was gonna give you. Have you guys seen Deep Water on Hulu? The the yes. Ben Affleck movie. It's supposed to be like suspenseful, but like it, it's more hilarious than anything. So you've seen it, Rich, right? Yeah. I think Did I've you? seen. I've seen Deep yeah. Lucy. Does that count? No. Spoiler. There's alert. a second Deep Lucy. Lucy. <laughs> Wait, that's the movie. That's, that's the movie I think it was a, a sci-fi uh, sequel. And there's, there's no way it includes any of the original cast. Right? Oh God, no. Well, no, yeah, Sam's no or, except for what Thomas J. Even Did though Thomas two of them live? live, yeah. Wait, I guess Sam couldn't make the sequel. I spoiler alert. No, no, no. Yeah, um, yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. But Deep Water, it'd be, it's because it's like supposed to be. I want to talk about Deep Water with you, Rich, just because the ending scene, like everything about it. It was more funny than suspenseful. Was it like spiders or something? Uh, the bike scene, the bike chasing scene at the end was insane. Um, but the cooler, William H Macy, um, Alec Baldwin. I believe he won an Oscar. Was nominated for an Oscar as a. It's a. It's a fabulous. It's a gamble right. movie too. Uh, where do we watch it? I did not go to just watch for that. Let's see. Uh, where is that available? I don't, it's you know. Uh, it's. I don't think it's at um, Redbox. I'm pretty sure Redbox would not have it. It's that. In stock, it's been like twenty years or so. But right, you go to just just on Voodoo, though, right? I'm sure it's on Voodoo. It's on everything, I'm sure. Um, it's on Apple. It's got like four bucks on Apple. I was trying to get you like something on Netflix, but you know, I don't know if it's free anywhere right now. That's fine. It's all right. Um, but yeah, it's it's actually. Oh, really if you're using, if you're already, if it's a bit different, if you're trying to get me to spend five dollars to watch Air Bud. But uh, you're you're selling this you're selling this movie that it's w well worth the the four dollar investment. So I'm I'm happy to do it. You like William H Macy, right? He's pretty oh, yeah, solid, of course. So yeah. the so Deep Water is what we're watching. No, 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 no. Uh, the cooler, the cooler. The cooler. Are you upset? Okay. It's it's. I think it's a good movie. Are you upset? You wanted a bad movie. Oh. Uh, I'm upset. It's not Deep Blue Sea Two. I'm upset. I just discovered that that movie exists. That's what you I'm upset about. That if you want, well, I want to save it now. Uh, okay, the cooler is easy. Also, Steve, if you want to pull it up, I don't know if Streamer is going to break. We have six things on the screen, but there you go. Okay, yeah. So uh, don't worry about my lineup. But Dean's lineup is on the right. Uh, there it is. Dean and Dean and Rich for sure played Jonathan Taylor. Mm -hmm. I purposely flexed Juju, trying to get two touchdowns off Jonathan Taylor leverage. Um, Steve, did you play Jonathan Taylor? I did not play Jonathan Taylor. Okay. Well, I, I was the donkey that played Chase Claypool, trying to get unique around Justin Fields. So trust me, it didn't matter at all. Uh, and then Dean, I think, yeah, the unique part was clearly tagging along a 13.5 point Marcus Vada scaling. You're the only person who rostered him. Three of us got in on Tony Pollard. Uh, yeah, that's the lineup. And, and of course, not. Barkley. We all had Christian Kirk, I think. Mm -hmm. I ran a Trevor Lawrence stack, so like, there's their thing, guys. You, you can't compete with these quarterbacks, man. Trevor Lawrence had a good game, <laughs> but you just can't compete with these quarterbacks, man. We talk about you guys want to play Kirk Cousins this week. You want to play Marcus Mariota? Can't do it, man. You just can't. Yeah. What'd you put up, Rich? Your big lineup on Fanduel, like 185 or so? Uh, in that area, it was Mahomes' team. Uh, the best lineup was the Mahomes' team. Uh, he outscored me. He was back. second. All right. I look forward to getting your uh, your recommendation or your review of the cooler. We'll talk about it next week. And again, I mentioned if somebody uh, you know tell us what you think of the cooler and not the chat, the chat. No, I'll, you know when you're after you, when you're watching the on the replay on YouTube and I'll, you know best response or tell us the movie that you think that uh, we should recommend next week for the, for the losers. Uh, and I'll pick somebody, give them a one week free of Roto Runners Premium. If you've lasted this long in this podcast, we do appreciate it. 
Uh, we also will be back early next week for Thanksgiving, talking the Thanksgiving slate. So that'll be fun. That'll be a good time for sure. Uh, John, as always, tell the people, the, the seven people that still don't know where to find you, they know where to find you, but just in case, uh, where do they find you on the interwebs? As Jessel said at the top of the show, this John guy is everywhere. <laughs> uh, 444.com, waiver wire column, if you're still on those regular season streets. I will also have playoff only content. If you still want to subscribe for 50% off, there's still half a season less and playoff content for FFPC, underdog, everything else. I'll definitely be handling on top of DFS. Short slates are usually my best, which is why I'm very, very excited about Thanksgiving. Hopefully to create a cash pool, a little bankroll here this week to get ready to hammer Thanksgiving slate. Rich. Uh, You see it there uh, at Lord Reeves on Twitter. Uh, I don't have to hawk anything this week because uh, everything on the site is free this free. week. Uh, worksheet's free. All of Warren's picks are free. Uh, everything's free at Sharp Football. Sweet. All right. Uh, we do appreciate y'all staying with us for the uh, hour and 30 minutes or so. It was a long pod. <laughs> uh, hopefully y'all enjoyed it. The NFL Pick 6 Week 11 show is in the books on behalf of Roto-Grinders. Uh, on behalf of John and Rich and producer Steve. Paris Hilton, uh, Ben DiNucci, <laughs> Brent Musburger. Ben Skowernick, uh, 14 ben yards. Skowernick, <laughs> and Thrive. Uh, we do appreciate it. Hope that y'all win some money this week. Good luck. We're out of here. Holler. 